Okay, so the next step in the cyanotype process is best done in uh, Photoshop. So the way that I want you to do this is um, once you do your, your main tweaks in uh, Lightroom in the develop module, right click over your image and do edit in and then do Photoshop. Now again, um, if you are in a Mac lab, then, then it'll automatically go to the version they have there, which I think is um, Photoshop version CS 5.1 but in any case the the, the tools that you're going to use here are going to be the same uh, regardless of, of which version that you have. Uh, this version here is CS 6 uh, which is the current version but um, it's going to be essentially the same for, for the other versions. So uh, what we do once we open this up you can see your background image here and um, what you want to do next is go to um, image and then adjustments and then invert and what happens obviously here is that we just made a negative now you can see that this is a pretty high contrast image and um, when you are making your negatives for this anything that is too high contrast is, is maybe not going to um, reproduce quite as well as things that are um, that are a little bit more um, well have a little bit more flat contrast now the things that are going to produce really well here is um, all of this sand here that's going to look good the mountains here in the background is going to look good the the detail that we're getting here in the sky that should all be pretty nice um, I'm a little concerned you can see all of the white that we have right in here and um, what I like to do is flatten that out just a little bit now the way that I want you to do that is by adding a curves adjustment layer now you don't need to understand exactly how to do this um, just to be able to uh, replicate the shape that that I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you here so um, if you click on this little button down here it looks like the little half um, it's a circle with half white and half dark then click on curves and what we're going to do is is make kind of a, a flatten out this middle section here so if you click on on the tone curve and it adds a point and you can you can change things out and the more you click the more it's going to flatten things out. Now you can see how it's changing the whole image and if you click on this little eye icon you can see how that looks. It, it's much less contrasty to begin with. Now um, this is going to look better in some areas than it will uh, for others and um, the, the nice thing I'm just going to move this over here a little more. The nice thing about doing this as a curves adjustment layer is that you have the benefit of the layer mask. Now, um, the, the way that you're going to want to edit this now is using the brush tool, which is right over here. Um, if you hold, wait until the thing pops up. And the little B means that if you click on B for uh, on the keyboard, then that's going to make the brush tool come up. Now um, again, if I turn this off, you, I, I really like the detail I'm getting here, and so I don't want to uh, apply my my tone curve for that. And so what I'm going to do is with the brush tool, I'm going to paint with a black brush. Now you can see the black and white here is the default, and that's the only two colors that you're going to get um, when you're work painting on a layer mask. And you you can tell you're painting on a layer mask because the bracket is around um, the layer mask. So basically if it looks like white and black if you click on this little arrow thing then it turns to black and white. Now the next thing I want you to do here is reduce your opacity. Right, It's going to be by default at 100% and the flow at 100%. Take these both down to about 20 percent uh, 20 to 30 percent now by reducing these it's going to give you a much more feathered effect whereas if you kept it at a hundred percent it would just be an on or an off kind of thing the next thing I want you to do is change your brush size and go with a nice big brush and so maybe somewhere in 150 range you can see how that looks compared to your image so that's pretty good and then just click and paint and the little areas where you don't want the effect to be applied and so here you can see that we're starting to hide some of the effects that we were doing and um, we're getting some of this detail here back in the mountains 
So uh, using the, the mouse, um, just click and drag and, and multiple little strokes is going to be the way to go. Um, th don't, don't think of this just to click and hold the whole thing, um, but, but multiple little strokes and you can see now we're getting some nice detail back here in the mountains. Um, I want to bring some detail back right in here on these edges and um, maybe some detail back over here. Now, um, the other thing to, you can use to change the, the size of your, your brush is the square brackets. And so the, the one that's on the left is going to make your brush smaller. The one on the right is going to make your brush a little bit bigger. So we bring back a little bit more detail here. And now you can see that some of the sand is going to start coming back. So uh, we'll, we'll bring some nice detail there and bring some detail back here in these trees. And for those of you who have never seen a tree like this before, uh, they're called Palo Verdes, which means uh, basically green stick in uh, Spanish. So there we go. Uh, the, the more time you spend, and actually we'll change the, this sky here a little bit too. The more time you spend on making your, your negative look nice and have a, oops, I pushed the wrong button, um, having a, um, a, a nice range to it, the better your contact prints are going to look. Now I see that I'm, I'm getting pretty low on time here and so I'm going to wrap this up for the day. Basically uh, the next step here, and of course you can save this so that you can go back and you can edit it, is to do file print and um, you're going to want to choose your laser printer that you've got in uh, the Mac lab and for this one here I'm going to do landscape because this is a landscape kind of orientation and um, we're going to have this scaled to fit media now um, instead of printing on paper what we're going to want to do is, is print it on um, transparencies and so uh, I'm going to try to uh, have some transparencies put into the Mac lab um, if not then um, you'll have to, to purchase some of that on your own but basically if you are using the uh, laser printer you want to make sure that you are using transparency specific for uh, laser printers and if you're doing this at home then you want to make sure that you're using transparencies that are made for an inkjet if that's what you're using. Um, they're, they're not interchangeable and um, if you try to interchange them then you're going to have some some difficulties. Now the, the print dialog box here is going to look a little different for the CS uh, 5.1 that you get in the Mac lab but basically the things that you need to know is that there's there's going to be a layout buttons that are going to give you either portrait or landscape orientation and so use whichever one is appropriate for your image and obviously this is a, a landscape format so uh, we want to have landscape make sure that your printer is um, set to the proper printer and um, for all of the, the computers in the uh, Mac lab except for the, the one up by the instructor um, you can only print to the, the laser printer so you should be okay there um, then uh, the next thing that you want to do is make sure that your um, your image is scaled to fit media so that's going to make the whole image shrink down to fit just on um, the, the one eight and a half by eleven sheet of, of transparency media anyways let me know if you have any questions and um, you know going through this took a little bit longer than I was hoping for and given the length of Tuesday's lecture uh, I don't want to go into any more detail uh, today if you can uh, start taking your pictures and start working on them in Lightroom and Photoshop to make your negatives on Tuesday I will walk you through the process for actually making the cyanotype prints now again this is um, this is something that you're going to need to order and I've been told uh, by one of the one of the uh, students in the class is that Glazers in Seattle will not ship the cyanotype kit across the state and they, they say it has hazardous materials so if you're going to uh, Seattle then you can you can actually go to the store and buy it um, but otherwise uh, use the link that um, is included in the syllabus for B&H photo and order that from um, from them 
and order that today if you've not already because um, it's going to take assuming that you want to save on shipping um, you can use use the the slow uh, first class mail and it should get to you within a little bit more than a week but um, you, you really don't want to wait any longer because um, it's going to take a 25 dollar kit and if you need to uh, overnight that or, or even use um, you know second or third day air that's going to make the, the kit twice as much money now the other thing I wanted to add is that um, these kits are going to allow you to make somewhere in the range of 25 prints and um, that's more than enough to share with um, two or three students so if you work in groups you don't you can split the cost there and I'd, I'd highly recommend that, that you do that um, if you really think that you are um, you know this is a process that's of interest to you and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the cyanotype process on Tuesday then you might consider getting your own kit um, just for the sake of um, you know giving you plenty of, of uh, reagent to experiment with but um, again you're more than welcome to, to share these reagents with each other and uh, save a, a few dollars for that. Let me know if you have any questions and I hope that you have a great weekend.